Good morning and uh, welcome back. So right now today what I want to do is show you how simple it is to hook up uh, a couple of different uh, three wire analog devices to the Teensy and uh, my motherboard or any Arduino for that matter. Um, all you need is you need some power, you need some uh, ground, and you need a, a signal pin that you can use. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, show you a couple of things. Well, first off, I'm going to just clear the deck here. I'm just going to pull out all this stuff that we've been playing with. So we have the entire analog side free from the for the Teensy. So any one of these pins from here all the way up to here are capable of taking analog in. And analog or digital, uh, we can we can set that parameter. And I've got a couple of different uh, devices we can play with. Probably the most common uh, that you'll all see is something like this uh, Sharp Ranger here, three wire device, one providing power, one for ground and one for signal. I've also got these really, really cool, remarkably affordable um, Palulu devices. These are infrared uh, emitter pairs. So one side, if you look at it really carefully, one side there's a surface mounted uh, infrared emitter and on the other side there's a surface mounted infrared detector. And you can solder in pins into these three holes. I've done that here. So I've taken and made a uh, uh, a little mount that we can use so we can hold on to this thing and uh, we're going to play with these two devices okay and hook them up and it's remarkably simple i mean literally it's plug and play so i'm going to take this sharp sensor to play with first and i'm going to choose um a zero okay which on my motherboard is the second row of pins from the back and of course uh, i'm going to say this every single time the inner pins are going to be signal the middle set of pins are going to be your supply voltage. I have it set at 5 volts. Okay, so I got 5 volts here. And this outer set of pins are all going to be ground. So I'm going to set in this row of 3 like that. Okay, so my signal is closest to the chip. My ground is furthest from the chip and the outer row of pins. And I'll just loosely set it on here. Like so, I won't screw this in all, you don't need to wait for this all to happen, that's good enough. Okay, so now I've got the sharp sensor mounted, I should back this up so you can actually kind of see it. Maybe I'll aim it up a little bit too, so we can do something with my hand. And let's uh, pull up some code. Um, simplest way to test, sorry. Simplest way to test is to simply go to examples go to basic and I would go to analog read serial okay it's got your basic bits right here um, we're going to launch the uh, the serial port okay serial begin 9600 and then down here in our infinite loop we're going to create a variable called sensor value and we're going to load that variable up by calling upon the function analog read and the pin a0 all right, and then it's going to print that value. The one thing I don't like about this uh, default, I wish they would change it. One millisecond is ridiculously fast. You can hardly see it happen. Um, and sometimes it goes so fast, I've had problems with it sort of seizing up uh, with my computer. Uh, it'll be printing and, uh, the, the command so fast it can't display it, and the next thing you know, it just kind of dies on me. So let's make it much more reasonable, we'll go with 100 milliseconds. So now every 100 milliseconds, it's going to take a sample and it's going to print it. Um, believe it or not, that should be it. So let's load it up. And if all goes reasonably well, we'll see our little blue bar shoot across. I should have done this first, sorry. heavens there we go and let's open up our serial monitor okay and there you go we have we'll put it up here so we can kind of see it maybe make it as small as possible we have it sending out some data my hand is now in front of it you can't quite see it maybe I'll zoom this out for one moment so I can get a, a better
better picture. You can see my desk again that way. Put this stuff back up here. Okay, as my hand gets closer and closer and closer, the number goes higher and higher and higher. And of course, as it gets further away, the number gets smaller, I'll pull it away, and now we're actually looking at my ceiling. And I'm in the basement, so it's not far away. So there you go, that was simple. Let's hook up another device. Let's hook up the, um, the Palulu device. And it's actually labeled on it, very small, I have to get my glasses on. And there's an S, a positive, and a negative, so we got signal, positive ground. So I'm gonna make sure I insert that the right way, like so. Okay, so now I've got it hooked up. And I'm gonna plug this one into not a zero, but let's go with a one. And let's go back to our hunk of code here. And why don't we do something simple? We'll just make that a one. And then we'll create another one. And we'll make this a one and that a... Probably should make this more logical. Why don't I go zero and one? There we go. And we're gonna output zero. Ah, zero. And then we're going to output one. In fact, we could probably do something a little cleaner than that. Why don't we do, let's make sure we get the, we're going to put in a little thing that says, Taking too long to do this. And let's put in a dead space right here. So, what should happen is it's going to print value 0 is equal to, and then on the same line, because I didn't tell it to switch lines, it's going to give us the value. Then it's going to switch to a new line, and it's going to print uh, value 1 is equal to, and then on the same line, it'll give us the value, and then it's going to give us a dead space and repeat. And let's make it even a little bit slower. Let's make it every half second. That's like that. And let's see what we get. Okay, so now we're looking at this sensor. And of course, if I aim it into oblivion here, it saturates because there's no uh, no infrared light. I'm in the basement and I'm using LED lights. I aim it down onto this white sheet of paper. No, you can't see it. I'll move it over on this side. There we go. I aim it down onto this white sheet of paper. And as I get closer and closer and closer, the value gets down. Okay, so we're measuring reflected light. And if I have something like a black line, okay, so I could have it... Uh, for example here, and I'm getting a very low value because the light is being reflected, and as it moves across to the black line, the number goes very high. So I can easily distinguish whether or not I'm getting reflected light or not, in which case I can see whether or not I'm on a black line or not, by looking at the amount of reflected light. And then what I've done here is I've 3D printed, and I'll post on uh, Thingiverse the plans for these things. And I'm going to insert this. I'm going to try to anyway. There we go. Into my little holder. And with two of those, I should be able to do line following, sumo, whatever else is you need to do. And with this sensor here, I can detect objects' proximity. So I could see if I'm going to hit something. As well as I can set it at an angle. Right? I can have this aiming slightly down so I could see if something is in front of me as well as the edge of a table, so I can see whether I'm going to fall off a table or hit something in front. So I'll show all that in another video when it talks about actual operation, and I will see you soon.